Well, welcome to story number nine. And this story is about the engine. You saw in the first few episodes that uh, it's a 1979 engine and it has issues, so it needed a refit. And we've done lots of lots of research and contemplating and looking at other options, new engines, and we've made a decision. We're going electric. <laughs> we uh, we're going uh, electric, right. and we're going with lithium iron phosphate batteries with a large battery bank. And there's lots of information out there, and we'll go into it during our story. We looked at lots of different manufacturers, and we are kind of do-it-yourself people. And there's a manufacturer out there that does a do-it-yourself kit kind of thing, which is right up our alley. And they are uh, Thunderstruck Motors. Honey, what are you doing? You don't hear that? No. Many of you may remember this beauty. This is a MD7A Volvo Penta engine. And going back to my Navy days, even sitting in diesel mechanic school, I, you know, in the back of my head, I always wanted to have a sailboat. And that was one of my things I was looking forward to was to rebuild the diesel engine, whichever uh, one I came along. I started to investigate parts for Volvo Penta MD7A, is what we have, and most of what you can get is on eBay. The generic gaskets and stuff are not too bad, but when you start getting into piston rings or rebuild kits, uh, they get pretty pricey, and a lot of them are... Uh, hard to get most of them come from Europe and I wasn't quite willing to invest that much into a older engine so then out of curiosity I started looking at replacement engines so this area here would be entry level into getting an engine and that's just the start of what actually needs to be replaced on this particular engine. Then I stumbled upon one of many different sailing channels, but Sailing Uma has gone electric, and Dan and Kika are quite the do it yourself people, and they started out with a forklift motor, DC forklift motor, and converted their boat to electric and then have since done upgrades and there's quite a few different um, companies out there providing this from there you can go down the rabbit hole of investigating this just google electric car conversions and there are more links and sites and YouTube videos about people doing this. There's car, there's car shows on the Discovery Channel that just show electric car conversions. You've probably seen people riding bicycles with conversions. So this is a whole community, I think not so much on the East Coast, but mainly on the West Coast and spreading rapidly. So again, I was looking forward at some point to rebuild this thing. One reason is I can envision a trip taking this thing down to Pennsylvania to the playground of my brother-in-law. I mean, he has an alcohol-fueled dragster.
I mean, how cool is that? We fly drones there. We fly airplanes. That's where I rebuilt the sawmill. He's rebuilding a Cessna airplane between welders and sandblasters, tools and lifts. You can work on just about anything there. But I digress. Thunderstruck Motors is a company that has a large EV community. They are tailoring to uh, motorcycle and cart kits. They have um, vehicles and they have a whole line of sailboat kits. And they that's one of the things they advertise right here. So that's the company we went with. So let's discuss pros and cons of going this route. To keep this short, we thought we'd do like a lightning round. So we have a list of cards and the research we've done and the list of pros and cons are on this card and I shuffled them up so we just, uh, we'll just go through them and then I'll stick them here. Can you go first? Yeah. Advantage, it's lightweight. Yeah, the engine and the batteries are much less weight than the diesel engine. Advantage the recharge with wind or solar. Energy that we produce this week from solar, we can use this weekend. We think that's a really cool advantage. Con, diagnosing issues are all, aren't are always easy. We read that and uh, that's, that's one, I mean, we're not gonna be able to pull into a marina and say, hey, this isn't working. We need, to, we need some help on this. Um, this is something that we have to know from top to bottom. So, yeah. You have to know. Yeah, I have to know. <laughs> well, you're going to have to know some of it. Some of it. <laughs> Advantage. It starts up immediately without need for warm-up. Advantage. No need to winterize the motor. Yeah. Turn it off and you're good to go. Yeah. Now, the, the batteries will pull inside. We do that for lead-acid batteries, too. Advantage, no fuel filter clogs, no oil changes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Advantage, instant torque and fast throttle response. Right, right. Yeah. Especially on a uh, an older engine. We would goose it and... Uh, <laughs> it up, it yeah. up. <laughs> Sometimes it would stall. <laughs> oh, this is a larger one. No. This is a con, and this is a con that we saw with uh, a lot of the write-ups we saw about electric versus diesel. And a lot of the cons that they had were based on lead-acid batteries. And most of the pros and cons we saw were for about two or three years ago. And I think things are changing very fast. The lithium batteries last 10 times longer. They are more expensive, but they last 10 times longer. Lead acid batteries have about 500 cycles, and lithium batteries about 5,000 cycles. In fact, most lithium batteries that we saw are, have warranties up to 3,000 cycles. Lead acid batteries you only take to 50% discharge, where lithium you take to 80% discharge, typically. You can go to 100 and it's not going to hurt the battery but uh, your number of cycles could be reduced and it's just recommended to keep it at 80. Uh, low self discharge, a lot of people store their lead acid batteries at full charge because they will self discharge over time. Not so with lithium batteries. Fast charging, you can charge them at 50 or 100 amps. We typically, our charger is gonna be 37 amps. Uh, constant power delivery, lead batteries will deliver power on a slow degrade like this, lithium batteries are pretty much right at 100% delivery and then it drops off. Advantage, less moving parts to fail. Right. Little to no noise, it plus yes. that's an advantage. Huge. Con, time to recharge. Right. And the more you use it, though, obviously, the longer it's going to take to recharge you. Advantage, very small in size. It's going to take up much less space in the boat. Pro and con, it makes you a better sailor. For us, it's a pro. Right. That's written up quite a bit in different uh, articles. Um, you know, if people rely on their engine mm -hmm. 
and uh, you want to you want to go down to Massachusetts on your engine, you're not gonna we're not gonna be able to do that. Uh, we're gonna have to sail there, which we don't have a problem with. Lots of experimenting since it's new technology. I would consider that more of an advantage myself. I mean, I'm learning something new, so that's kind of cool. Cons. Range limited to size of battery pack. Sure. Advantage. The parts are cheaper. Very true. And readily available. You can get uh, parts for this thing quite a few different places. Con for some. Level of knowledge of boat systems. Yeah, I guess that's related to the other one. The other one, yeah. Advantage, no exhaust smell. Yes! <laughs> oh, I hate that smell. Ugh. And finally, advantage, no risk of carbon monoxide poisoning. Right. Huge. Right. And I guess the bottom line for what we feel that this solution fits the needs that we have for our situation. Um, if we had a much larger boat, it may be a little bit different. Uh, we put our uh, dinghy motor on the back of the boat to push us along, br bring us back from Vital Haven, which is uh, about 10 miles or so yeah. out to there. And uh, I mean, in an emergency, we would have to do something like that. But uh, we actually have more horsepower with the new engine too. Yeah, we'll have a lot more horsepower with the new engine. Not not typically that we'll use it because the more you push the motor, the faster you're going to discharge your batteries. So I guess that's about it. So hey. go electric. <laughs>
drop it close to as far as it'll go. Yeah. And then uh, I'll have to attach that chain, loosen it up, and then redo this this contraption here. So that's the story. Uh, sorry it was so long-winded and lots of explanation, but there's a lot of details in this subject. Um, next episode, we're going to dive into the different various projects we have on the boat. Uh, currently, we I think we're kind of running out of time, but yeah, we're definitely running out of time. We'll we'll get there and share our experience. <laughs> but before we go, since Finn's no longer on our lap. Here's the actual motor. It weighs about 38 pounds. It's uh, three phase. Uh, this one's water cooled. I went that route because it would be a lot easier to cool that way. Uh, some of the other boats we saw online that had made conversions, they had problems keeping the the uh, engine compartment cooler and had to do fans and all that kind of stuff. But I thought, especially here in Maine waters with cool mm -hmm. water, when we get down to the Caribbean, maybe a little bit, uh, we have to run the water pump a little bit more, but it's the engine. And there's a reduction gear that goes with this. So it's a two to one drop in uh, RPM, it increases torque. And so that's, that's it. And she's so much prettier than the old engine. <laughs> so much prettier so i'll show the uh the cover i made for the engine and we're almost ready to put that in so thanks for watching and until we start the refit and that's another story see, see ya, ya. and we've made a decision We don't do that. <laughs> what, are we, what am I supposed to do? You, you, you can say, we're going electric. Oh, but I thought we were going to do something. I'll do that at later when I talk oh, about the, the I did, I, I'm sorry, I didn't get the whole okay. gist. Okay. Is Thunderstruck Motors. I need, I, you don't look around. You don't hear the music. Oh, what am I supposed to do? You're, you have an awkward silence like, what is he doing? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Two or three seconds later. Oh, okay. All right. So, got it. What are you doing? <laughs> okay. All right. Got it. All right. All right. Well.